To be honest with you, I think the real problem that we have is that NVIDIA is not doing what is in the best interest of the United States. Oh. David mentioned this. When the U.S. banned the sale of the top-end GPUs. Sachs, hey, um, you're here. I think you got some uh, official information for us on this. What, what, what's the story here? Wasn't this supposed to be the chip that was made for China? In a sense. I mean, there is a long history to this. Okay. So first of all, just to be clear, we're, we're not talking about tariffs. We're talking about export controls. And the export controls are designed to prevent certain sensitive technologies, technologies that could have a dual use, potential military as well as consumer application from going to China. And this goes all the way back to 2019. The first Trump administration placed a ban on extreme ultraviolet lithography equipment going to China. This is the key technology in the printing of transistors on the silicon wafer in the semiconductor manufacturing process. And there's only one company in the world that makes these machines. They cost like $200 million. It's called ASML. It's a company in the Netherlands. In any event, the first Trump administration prevented these machines from going to China, which I think in hindsight was a really far-sighted decision. Because if it weren't for that, China might today be dominating global manufacturing of semiconductors and their inability to get that sort of lithography equipment, I think, definitely put a dent in their plans. Subsequent to that, in 2022, the Biden administration started adding leading-edge chips to the export control list, like you said, the H100. NVIDIA then designed a new chip that was basically a version of the H100, but they reduced the amount of flops or computational power just below the thresholds so they could continue selling to China. That was called the H800. The Biden administration then added the H800 to the export control list in 2023, so NVIDIA developed the H20, which again is kind of like a Nerf version of the H100, just has less computational power. I think the issue is that flops isn't the only criteria by which you can measure the power of a chip. There's also now memory bandwidth. And in the new paradigm of reinforcement learning and, and test time compute, memory bandwidth actually matters more than the amount of flops. And if you look at the memory bandwidth on the H20, it actually has 20% more memory bandwidth than the H100. So I think there is a view that this chip is just frankly too good. Mm. And the response I'd have to people who don't think we should be restricting this is, are you against export controls in general, or you just think that we're drawing the line in the wrong place here? Because, you know, I've heard folks like our friends like Bill Gurley and so forth say that- Yeah, I was about to um, yeah, pull- That we're making a mistake. But I think the question for those people is, would you sell them everything? I mean, mm. if China wanted to buy the latest NVIDIA chip, the GB200, would you sell that to them? Would you sell well, them yeah, so a million of those? Would you sell them five million if they're willing to pay a premium? Yeah. It seems to me that at some point you have to say that some technologies are just too sensitive to be sold to China. And so then the question is, just, are you drawing the line in the right place? Let me bring Freeberg in on that. Freeberg, uh, friends of the pod like Gavin Baker said these tariffs uh, and these type of bans are going to essentially guarantee that America will lose AI because, and Gurley as well has this position, that we're now going to make China force them to make their own chips. Now, you know, necessity will be the mother invention and it's going to escalate and we'd be better off just selling them these instead of the latest ones. What's your take on that? That, you know, this will be the, well, um, I think this is the, the critical, inspiration for them to build their own NVIDIA. It's an important question. Last year, China announced and began a $37 billion investment in developing their own three nanometer uh, chimp technology. So, you know, the EUV lithography systems that Sachs is referencing um, require these wavelengths of light at about 13 and a half nanometer, which is, you know, the, the previous technology was like 200 plus nanometer. So it's very, very small wavelengths of light that you have to be able to manipulate very in a very kind of discrete way to print circuits that are just three nanometer scale. And so uh, it turns out that last year, China uh, made a claim that this investment they had made was starting to pay off and they had developed their own EUV system. And their big semiconductor company is called the Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation or SMIC in China. Mm -hmm. They launched a, a chip, a seven nanometer chip with Huawei in their Mate 60 Pro, which is sort of like their iPhone competitor in China. And so they're proclaiming that they've already got this EUV technology 
from what I understand, and Sachs would know better than I, it sounds like there was a lot of reverse engineering and workaround of existing technology in order to deliver that Got system. It. But they may now already be investing in and developing their own system. So JCal, I think they're doing it either way. I think that Got they're it. going to invest and build their own EUV and chip manufacturing capacity either way. And the question is, does this slow them down or limit their ability on the application or the AI layer to kind of yeah. be held back for some Obviously period of Obviously, it accelerates time? it because they have no choice but to accelerates their commitment to it. So Tim, you've been talking about these uh, EUV technologies in the 200 nanometer one specifically. <laughs> it's my entire during... space. It's my entire <laughs> it's special. special. It's a yeah. little crazy that you ripped me off like this. My entire <laughs> Sorry, special is about family. is about the lithograph. Yeah, and that's <laughs> that's the hour that I do. You know, I'm of the mind: if you give a man a chip, he makes one semiconductor or a few. But if you teach a man to make a chip, he makes multiple semiconductors and invades Taiwan. So that's where I am with this, you know? Yeah, it's, feels like uh, it, yeah. I think we should keep them dependent. Keep selling it to them. Y uh, yes. Keep selling it to them. You Treat know, it like You Percocet. understand how this works. You yes. Know, if, he, if, if somebody becomes addicted to the good stuff, then they come back. You don't want to give them too much. And you hide die. a little, you, you huh? backdoor the technology with a, a little surveillance and stuff. So have some fun. <laughs> have some fun. You know, that's it, been absolutely. done before. Absolutely. Uh, sure. Backdoors all the time. Yeah, Backdoor the everything. technology, a little surveillance capability. You slip it in there. Yeah. I think that the technology that they need is extremely non-trivial. And I do think that it actually slows them down quite a bit if they don't have access to it. Can I just take a step back and up-level this? I sure. think it was in 2017, the State Council of China published this plan, and they were incredibly transparent and honest. They said, this plan is for China to become a global leader in AI by 2030, okay? And it said, so this is in 2017. And they said, by 2020, we need to have made iconic advances. By 2025, we should be a major engine of the industry. And by 2030, they should occupy the commanding heights, they said, in the AI tech. Okay, so why is that important? To be honest with you, I think the real problem that we have is that NVIDIA is not doing what is in the best interest of the United States. Oh, David mentioned this. When the US banned the sale of the top end GPUs, the A100 and the H100, they quickly introduced the A800 and H800. What does that mean? Well, all it was was just a chip that was basically the same. It slightly reduced the data transfer speed so that it went under the export control threshold, but it was still really usable. Mm. Then late last year, they introduced this thing called this H20 that was explicitly designed for China and to be compliant with US rules at the time, which again, gives these guys substantial performance. Okay, so what do you have? You have a 2017 plan that they've been executing against, which is to say, we want to dominate this space. And you have an American company that has been working around the guidelines at every turn to try to land silicon into the hands of China. So then you would say, well, maybe there's not that much going into China. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss the latest NVIDIA news because we post them daily.